you join me here in the garden and uh, we're continuing work on this garden railway. As you can see we've started to get to the point where it might become slightly more recognisable as something that will ultimately become a garden railway. We've got the baseboards, these are exterior quality ply and they're uh, I think they're about 16 or 18 mil thick. Uh, the exact uh, dimensions elude me right now. I've been so hard at work. As you can see underneath the baseboards, we're bracing with this tantalised timber. Uh, two by two I've got. Um, it can all be painted afterwards, but uh, the tantalised stuff is good for in the garden because it's ready preserved and you really don't want stuff rotting out on you. Um, I've only used the one piece down the middle of this um, because it doesn't need the extra one because it's not uh, not a very very long length. Some of the others that are spanning a greater distance between brick piers I'll use two of these side by side. We've also got the 3x3 three three tantalised timber which we've very carefully got our levels um, using a long piece of batten and a spirit level to make sure that each one is uh, locked back to the, the previous one on the levels because model trains don't really like gradients in fact the only thing they like less than gradients is sudden changes in gradients so really we're trying to make this all as level as possible uh, but it's hard going because well things never quite go as you plan no matter how much you plan them and we've got the added disadvantage that we've got trees in this garden so we've got to fiddle our way around those trees so this is really progress as you can see. Uh, we've got the first piece there coming out of the shed. You can see we're going to have a very tight corner there necessitated by this conifer tree. Um, so well I think the Helgen Bayer Garrett is out of the question for this layout but uh, I don't think any of the curves are going to be any tighter than the ones that are inside the shed but uh, time will tell and uh, at least by having the baseboards a foot wide we've got plenty of space for the track to uh, wiggle about a bit to um, make sure that the corners aren't as tight as uh, they otherwise would be. Also by having the baseboards this wide we give a little bit of a safety net to any stock that derails that it won't just plunge to the ground um, it has somewhere to catch its fall. Well this is nearing the end of a hard day's work <laughs> and believe me it is really hard. Uh, one of the biggest frustrations when you're doing this is trying to find where the heck you put your pen down. Still can't find it. I did have it in my hand a minute ago. It's just one of those things. But you can see that we've got um, really what will be the most complicated bits done here which go back to the openings in the shed. It has been hard work and really the best watchword is measure three times, cut once, still get it wrong and then keep trimming until you get it right. But uh, the next stage from this, once I've um, done the last of the securings, is to do the water waterproof coating on the top which will be bitumen and roofing felt. But that's for another video. Anyway, join me next time. Don't forget to share this video and uh, also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know when we post new video updates. Anyway, yeah, until next time, you take very good care and I shall continue sweating in this unseasonable sun for uh, Britain. <laughs>